Hi, welcome back to Crossfader. Jamie Hartley here, bringing you another DJ tutorial. This one's specifically for anyone that owns the DDJ400, DDJ800, or DDJ1000 using Recordbox DJ. These controllers all have access to the keyboard mode within Recordbox DJ. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you not only how to access keyboard mode, but also some of the creative possibilities around using it. And not only that, you will learn some music theory that is essential for when it comes to using keyboard mode. So you know which pads you can play to create new melodies and also do things like tone play transitions. This is quite an extensive tutorial, so please make sure you listen carefully, stick around, don't expect to master this overnight. This is something to come back to and keep working on. It's quite an advanced DJ trick. I hope you enjoy it. Please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, and do all that good stuff if you enjoy this video, and hit that bell icon to get notified of plenty more tutorials, reviews, and mixes coming your way. Let's get stuck in. Keyboard mode is a performance mode found in the Recordbox DJ software. On the DDJ400, DDJ800, and DDJ1000, it can all be accessed via the pad modes here. It's a secondary pad mode underneath the hot cue, so if we hold shift on any of these controllers and press hot cue, it will bring up keyboard mode. Now, when you first do this, if I just press shift and hot cue again, it will flash whatever hot cues you have available or saved on your specific song. You can then pick any of those hot cues and decide to pitch that cue point up and down and the track will keep going back to that point and taking the pitch of it up and down like if you were playing a keyboard. So if I choose the first hot cue, for example, it will then map that hot cue out to all of these pads. We can go up in semitones or down in semitones. So the first pad here on the bottom that's flashing white is the root note. It's the original note of the song at its original pitch. You can see in the record box software that this track that I've got loaded, Don Diablo Fever, is in E minor. That's located here. Now, if we just go up one at a time, if I press this, it will play the song from that point. I've set a hot cue on a nice note in the song, so this is just a note that's isolated by itself. Now if we go up, you'll notice on the screen, it's gone to F minor and plus one semitone, two semitones, and you can go all the way up and then use the page buttons to reveal even more notes. So we're up here at plus seven. If we press this backward button here, it will go, it's a bit weird, if you press the left button, it will go up in pitch. Then we go eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You can go back down a page. And we go down. If we press this again, it turns blue, and this means we're going down in pitch. Back to its original pitch. So we've got two octaves there. We've got an octave down and an octave up. If you know anything about music theory, that's a whole jump from this is on E minor. And when we go up a page, this is also E minor. It's just 12 semitones higher, which is an octave higher. Now, the first thing you're going to need to learn is some basic music theory. Now, it might sound quite complex to start with, but I'm going to break it down in DJ terms and looking at the pads in front of us. Now this track is in E minor. There may be songs in your library that are in major keys. So if we have a look in our entire collection, you'll notice in the key notation, there is anything from, you've got all your letters A, B, C, D, E, and G. And then there may be minor versions or major versions. To know whether it's a minor or major, basically if it has a small lowercase m next to it, that means it's a minor key. If it doesn't have anything next to it, then it's a major key. The small b means flat, and a hashtag means sharp. So you don't really need to know too much beyond this point. All you need to know is whether it's a major key or a minor key. So if it's got a little small m, it's a minor key. If it doesn't, then it's a major key. Even if it has a little b or a hashtag next to it, it's still a major version of that. So just to go in a bit closer, this would be d flat minor. This would be g minor. This would be C major. 
the hashtag would be F sharp minor. So you can start to decipher your library. Now you don't need to know what that really means, but as long as you can decipher which is a major and which is a minor. The next thing is the keyboard. You would never play a song or a melody of a song just using all of the notes on a keyboard. Each key uses specific notes on a black and white keyboard. Now, this is what you're going to need to remember and start to ingrain into yourself as muscle memory. There is a code that you need to go by to understand what pads you are allowed to play to play either a major key or a minor key. Let me just go through this really simply. This white one is called the root note. This is the starting point. In a minor scale, because this is a minor song, the rule is that we jump two pads. So we go, miss one, play one. We can play these two side by side. And then we jump to the next pad. So we do one step. Let's count it as one, two steps. One step. Another two steps, which misses one and plays one. So let's go from the top. And then we do two steps again. So it goes two, one, two, two. Two, one, two, two. Then from there, we can go to the next page and it jumps up one step. So from this pad, it goes one step to this pad. And then we jump two again and two again. And back down again. This is what you call a natural minor scale. Let's do it one more time back up. We'll highlight each pad that you are allowed to play in the natural minor scale going up. And then the same applies when we go down as well. So we start here and we go two steps, one step, two steps, two steps, one step, and then two steps and two steps again. So now to perform with the keyboard mode in record box, what I've done is I've set a loop on the back end of this song, No New Friends Dom Bresky Remix. This is also in E minor. I've chosen a song that is in the exact same key and a similar BPM so that the two tracks should gel together when I play with this uh, note in a different melody. Now playing around with pad mode with the pads and finger drumming is something that's taught in our tone play course and also other courses for specific um, softwares but you'll get an idea here of how this can be useful. So we could just pick a few notes and then create a pattern. And as you can hear there, you can create your own melody and pattern that's interesting to then lead into the next song. Just to make it even more interesting, what you could do is add something like an echo on and then cut the crossfader in and out. Here we're applying different techniques together to create something even more unique. So let's have a listen to just how that sounds before I show you how to then actually just mix into the next song. <laughs>
And that's me just being quite random, but using the crossfader to cut in and out. You could then simplify it, practice, and just play around like I was just doing then until you come up with a pattern that you really like. Now, don't overcomplicate it for yourself. I've just stuck to this one page. I'm not trying to jump between the pages when creating patterns like this because it can start to get really complex to have to go change page and then back again. So you can create some really nice effects just using the pads that we've chosen. Now, to get back out of this and, and actually use it practically to mix into the next song, what I'd probably recommend doing is having a hot cue on the start of a phrase, which I've got here, which is the breakdown. So all I'm going to do is from keyboard mode is jump to hot cue mode and play the song from that bottom hot cue. Please note though, if I haven't pressed this pad, which is my root note, I will need to hit master tempo or if you're on the DDJ 1000, the key sync button or something to try and take it back to that original key. If you don't have access to a master tempo button, like if you're on the DDJ 400, then what I'd recommend is finishing your pattern back down here and maybe doing a bar down here before jumping into your mix. Let's just listen to how that sounds. As you saw, you have to be really quick to get back onto that hot cue. Now, there's a reason why I set it on this pad is because my root note, then when I hit hot cue, I'm just hitting the same pad again. I don't have to move to a different pad. So that's a really neat little trick there. And we can just finish the mix. That's how I want it. I want it loud. Turn up the speaker. This is a heater. I need to breathe. I got the fever. And we're then into the next song and it's just a way of being creative and practical with the keyboard mode. That's not the only way to use keyboard mode though. You could also use keyboard mode to perform tone play transitions. We have a whole specific tone play course that will teach you how to master the art of tone play from using our crossfader piano tools to learn how to play your controller like a piano and it goes way beyond just what we're going to do now. However, here's an example of how keyboard mode can perform. You can use keyboard mode to perform the tone play transition. Check out the course if you like this kind of mixing where you will learn way more. But here we go. I've got a note selected here that I'm going to put into the keyboard. There we go. And then by using the rules of the minor scale, I figured out that these three notes sound like Bodak Yellow. So I could just play this song I could add some reverb to it. Jump to keyboard mode. And then I'm going to pause this song so that the hot cues work in gate playback. And there we have a tone play transition from a house track to a hip hop track, just using those three notes that you can play over and over again. Once you've mastered that melody, you could even apply other songs in the same key and find the root note and even do loads of different tone play transitions into the same song. Again, something that we teach religiously inside the tone play core, so go check that out. Just for reference, you're not just limited to the minor scale, you also have the major scale. Now I could still use this same root note, I can use any note and play it in either a major or a minor scale. For performing tone plays and for playing over the top of other songs, I'd recommend choosing songs that are in a major key already, but just so you know the pattern and how many steps you can take, so you can then get some muscle memory going on, 
the major scale goes like this. It goes two steps, another two steps. It sounds happier than before than this. So major scale, two steps, two steps, one step, two steps, and then two steps again, two steps again, one step. So let's go back. There we go. And it sounds much happier than the minor scale, and that's the difference between major and minor. Again, the same works when you go down in semitones as well. So here are the pads that you can play in a major scale. Let's highlight them. You could then play along different melodies like before over another track that's in the same key that is also a major key. All of this is quite advanced techniques, quite advanced theory to get your head around. So I wouldn't jump in at this kind of stuff as a total beginner DJ, but it's well worth understanding what keyboard mode is on your piece of DJ equipment and how it can be applicable and used in your DJ sets, whether it be now or further down your DJ career journey. And there it is, quite an extensive tutorial using the keyboard mode in Rekordbox. Now I hope this has inspired you and taught you a few things that you can maybe take and apply in your DJ sets and practice with. If you want to learn some specific tone play transitions, free lessons from our course plus some tools, then click the link to access that free lesson and those tools and you can see inside our tone play course and if that is something that you want to learn more about. If not, then check out our other online DJ courses where you can learn way more like more advanced finger drumming in the more advanced courses and learn how to use your controller to its full potential. We have record box specific courses for beginner, intermediate and advanced, so please go check them out. I'll see you in another tutorial video very soon and thanks again for watching. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned.